Welcome to the first episode of my open world tree system. In this episode you're going to learn how to interact with individual instance static meshes spawned by PCG and chop them down. Let's dive right in. I'm going to start off with a blueprint. I'll call it BP underscore tree spawner and a PCG graph pcg underscore tree spawner. In the blueprint I will add a pcg component and for this I'm going to be using a box collision. For the box collision I'm just going to start with box extents 2500, 2500, and 5000 making the zx a little bigger so I make sure that it collides with the landscape even on hills. PCG I am going to set to tree spawner. Compile and save and now in the PCG I'm going to get landscape data and I'll get the height only because I just want these trees to go up and down. Then a surface sampler and for this I find that point extends 2525, looseness, let's say 6, and just crank the points per square meter up a little bit so that that's not a limiter. It seems to give a fairly good result. Next, transform points to rotate these trees 0 to 360 on the z-axis, and lastly a static mesh spawner. And the static mesh spawner, I'll add a mesh entry for pcg underscore tree 0, 1, and let me duplicate this entry, and I'll add PCG tree 0, 3 as well. Save that, and let's drop this in the world, and there we go. We have a few trees. All right, let's add the ability to chop them down. I'm using the third-person game type, so under third-person blueprints, I have my BP third-person character. I'm going to add a new enhanced input action to chop this down. I'm going to add the new input action by typing in input action. And I'll call it IA underscore chop. And now under input, I'm going to add this input action as a mapping. IA chop. All of the default settings for this input action are what I want, so I'm not changing them. And I'm going to set the key value to left mouse. Now I'm back in third person character. I'll add in IA underscore chop. And this action I'm going to trigger off of started. It's going to be a line trace to see if we have connected with a tree. And I'm going to start it at the follow camera's world location. and I'm going to make it go in the direction of the camera's forward vector, so the direction you're looking, and I'm going to multiply that forward vector by the length of the line trace. In this case, I'll change the vector on the multiply to float, and I'll make it 500,000 in length. Plug that into the end, compile, save, and let's test this out. doesn't do anything because I need to turn on the draw debug type. Let's do that again. Alright, it's working and it's hitting trees, but it's kind of hard to aim. It's going straight through the character. So let's fix that. I'm going to rotate the forward vector around an axis, and the axis is going to be the axis that goes left right through the character. So that is going to be the get right vector from the follow camera, and then I can plug that right vector into the axis of rotation, and let's rotate it up by 10 degrees, so negative 10. Now this new vector I can just plug into the multiply, compile, save, and let's try this again. And there we go, a lot easier to aim. Okay, let's make this line trace do something back in third person character. Let's turn off the debug type. 
And when it hits something, we get the out hit result. I'm going to break that hit result and take the hit component and cast to instance static mesh component. Hook that up. And if it is an instance static mesh, let's remove the instance. The instance we're going to remove is the hit item. Compile, save, try this again. And there we go. We are now removing some trees from this instance. All right, so if you want some basic tree chopping, here is where you would replace each instance you connect with with an actor with the same transform and the same static mesh as the instance, and then you could destroy the actor in whatever way you feel like. So there you go. All right, I'm going to end this here. Next time, I will show you how to respawn these trees on a timer.